Um, awesome. Hey, everyone. I am uh, very excited to talk to my friend Parker Perrin today, coming uh, coming out of Charlotte, North Carolina, I believe is uh, is that is that right? That's what you told me. That's the new that's the new place. All right. He just uh, right. just moved down there recently. I don't, I don't know how recent. How uh, how long you been? A week ago. A week, week ago. ago. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Your stuff's yeah. still in transit, maybe. <laughs> Well, stuff's, stuff's here, but it's half in boxes and half, you know, yeah. half not in boxes, but nice. uh, yeah, hence the, like I said, hence the mobile office, right? So we're, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm still trying to find a, a good place to set up shop and, and get, uh, you know, truck, truck works for now. So, yeah, well, luckily you got a, a really dope moon roof up there to, that does help bring in lots of good light. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> This, your, your truck probably had better light than like 90% of people's offices. That's right. That's right. It's, it's basically, uh, that's right. Yeah. Cool. Um, cool. well, uh, you know, I can introduce you and that's okay, but I, I always find it's, it's best to kind of like get it straight from the, the source. So can you, uh, tell us who you are and, and what you do in a quick little bio? Little bio. Yeah. So um <clears throat> parker perrin owner of diamond solutions um lover of jesus uh husband to an awesome wife and uh got three little kids uh i used to be able to say three three under three now it's uh three under four but uh um, those are a huge yeah, part of have another part of life. four under four yeah, I think, uh, no thing. Yeah, we're good. Uh, we're good. We're good. Um, I thought I would have three under, you know, three really quick to like get out of diapers fast. And now I just, I'm like, what was I thinking? Uh, it's a lot, a lot all packed into one little bundle, but, um, yeah. uh, so yeah, asphalt and concrete, um, across, you know, quite a few States. I think we've done work in 34 States, um, primarily in Michigan and South Carolina, um, those are where our hubs are. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, we work with property managers to assess pavement and provide solutions, mm -hmm. which sounds slightly corny, but it's not really meant to. I love I love problem solving. So that's yeah. that's like the you know people people they're like, hey, I've got a parking lot that needs steel code. I'm like, great, that's you know, but somebody who has like a an intricate problem or you know something we're trying to solve. That's that's those are the those are the ones that make your day fun. You know, we try to. Mm -hmm. really understand what's going on so yeah um well awesome man we're, we're definitely gonna dig into the the growth of your of diamond solutions but how did you kind of initially get interested in kind of property management and how did you get into that that field it's a good question well, um when we were trying to grow diamond or when we threw wine about five years when we when we bought the company um uh, I thought it was really clever to do what I call like the shotgun approach and just find somebody and then just kind of follow them everywhere. And, uh, I think it worked relatively well, uh, for a while. I think we're kind of at the point where we want to start to, you know, now we kind of understand how to generate leads and how to go after the people we want to go after that can control that a little bit more. Right. So, um, we're kind of in the process of, high, of of honing in uh where we actually do work so we're not just everywhere and you know can provide better culture for our guys but uh mm -hmm. initially it was just simply you know we I, I wanted to do asphalt and maintenance not just paving you know not just concrete i wanted to kind of be able to offer a suite of services that um again was uh, in my mind was a you know, as unbiased uh service right if, if somebody needed concrete i could do concrete it wasn't like i only did one and wanted to push one so uh, we found that that just served property managers well and a lot of property managers have parking lots you know not just in one area they have them across the state so uh just found that that was a good fit hmm. nice um and, and doing my due diligence on you uh one of your linkedin reviews mentioned how at 15 you were walking around the neighborhood asking if there was any work you could do um, i love that that's that's like that's, the one linkedin review too right <laughs> it might that's be. a beautiful donna um, austin yeah 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 shout out to donna um how, Thanks, how did donna. you uh how did you were, were you just born this way did someone say like hey go Man. hustle hustle hard bro that's right 
you know, I, it's uh, to make it brief. I think it's it's a kind of fun reminiscing, but I I didn't realize. I've always thought of myself as an entrepreneur, but I didn't, you know, it's more like, I think that's what I do. So like, okay, I'm an, I'm an entrepreneur, but, um, but then I was like, man, when I was like, I don't even know, we were building a house. I think when I was four, my parents built a house and they gave me a penny for every nail I picked up. And I was, I loved, and that was like four years old. I was picking up nails for pennies. And then I think at 12 years old, I was diving in ponds to find disc off this, um, to and sell them you know to to make money and then i was hawking tickets for snowboarding uh that i'd buy you know on cfx or whatever the radio station and then go to the parking lot before i went snowboarding and sell tickets off and it, it just kind of is it's just part of who i is always looking for ways to make money you know so i i uh and, and i had a lot of fun doing it I still have a lot of fun doing it so um I think, I think, you know, making money is great. It's how you, what you do with it. Right. So I, I think, uh, I always have to balance that. Like, you know, obviously I think a love of money is not a good thing, but, uh, uh, I do love making money. So I would, if I didn't say that I would be lying, uh, but I also love making it so that I can help people. So I think that's, that's the rub. Yeah. Well, it, it is fun. It's, it's, it's exciting to, to find someone that's willing to pay you to do something that you might secretly have done for free as well right right you're exactly <laughs> right yeah that's true that's you know, true it's just the, yep. the thrill of the find I, I almost you know people love fishing people love hunting um yeah. I've, I've not really done either of those ever so i can't say if they're good or not but i right. i feel a similar kind of thrill when you know i'm prospecting and i'm like hey you know would you be interested in our services and like yeah and i'm like oh yeah all right like we're getting right. we're getting there I'm about to just drop some i'll do it for free i mean <laughs> actually i'm probably supposed to charge for this but like ah, i'm just excited yeah. that i got you yeah. i do it for free but my people they probably would be upset if i asked them to do it for free <laughs> that's right that's right no that's exactly it it's a good point there's a lot of different uh ways people find that energy so yeah 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 and like you know i i really relate to you like uh i i feel like I was an entrepreneur before I even knew what an entrepreneur was. Um, and it, it's just like, that always just made so much more sense to me. It's like, oh, like, like I remember, and you know, this is kind of, I don't know, a bit of a humble brag, but I remember like I was in grad school and we were, I was in like my favorite marketing class. And for some reason we were talking about the different levels of pay for you know, like the, the bank teller and the bank manager and like the bank owner and then like the CEO and then like the owner of the whole company. And the owner of the whole company made like a billion times more than everyone else. And I was like, how hard is that person working? It can't be that much harder. Right, like, right. I'm going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to do that. <laughs> or better yet, the investor that, that funds the owner, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. He gets, he, I don't know if that's better he, yet. He but... does even less probably. <laughs> right. Right. Probably had to do what the other person did though for a while to be able to get to yeah there unless you have a rich uncle or a rich yeah yeah. <laughs> so something got handed down, right? But um no, that's good. That's good. Yeah, I think uh I don't know that I ever had that much intelligence behind the decision. I think it, it was uh it wasn't that mm -hmm. planned out. It was more of a natural for me at least. It was just uh, uh I my, I think my, my grandma told me one time that she's like, Parker, she's like, you could like clean toilets and you would love, you find a way to like enjoy it. Like, I, and it really doesn't matter yeah. what I do. It's, you find, you know, that brain, your brain kind of creates uh, a game, gamifies things, right? You kind of find ways to, I, I love timing things when I do things. I love, you know, just setting goals and, and trying to get faster and mm -hmm. a lot of times to get weird looks from people. Like, why are you timing this? And I'm like, oh, just because I want to, like, I time the Starbucks drive through, right? Like, I, I want to know. That's my, not really to gamify. That's just because I want to know when I'm at this point in the line, I want to know how long it takes for me to get from here to the window so I can plan out my day. And if I drive by yeah. and see that line that wraps around the building, I'm like, no, nope, I'm keeping going, <laughs> you know? But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, the efficiency is definitely, uh, it's a fun but dangerous game because I, I feel like sometimes you're like, oh, I'm making great time. You're like, did I even need to do this? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Yeah. So you gotta, you gotta be careful with uh, 
with, with getting them or, or efficiency in relationships doesn't work too well right i, str- yeah. I struggle with that like yeah. you got I get you get so efficient with everything in life and then you realize like i'm gonna stop and just listen to my wife and it's like that's <laughs> really really good but it's you know it doesn't feel efficient sometimes yeah i, I would sure. say relationships and anything creative are about the least efficient activities you can engage in yeah yeah. But they're the most meaningful, right? They're the most meaningful and the most. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I most, wonder if uh, there's, uh, there, there, there's probably uh, an inverse correlation to like things that are efficient <laughs> and things that are actually important. Oh, that's interesting. I never, I never impact versus. That. Yeah. Yeah. Until you, that's good. you said it like that. Yeah. Um, that's great, man. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, a lot of people are like, oh, you work on Saturdays and Sundays? Like, why? Like, that sounds like a nightmare. And I'm like, I mean, like, I'll have fun on Saturday if there's some fun going on. If there's nothing fun going on, it's like, no, I'm going to, like, get some stuff done. It's like, that's right. fun. That's satisfying for me. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. I get energy from that. So I, I never understood. I, I guess people just get paychecks and they're cool with that. Right. Yeah, I think the perspective, right? I think if, if I, and I, I hate it because I obviously have a lot of people that work for Diamond. And so it's, it's always that, how do I make it? And if I, if I were working for somebody else, what would I want them to do for me that would help this be more than just a job? Because um, I think if it is just a paycheck or just a job, then like, I, I totally get why you're not working on Saturdays and Sundays. It's like, it's not really moving your life forward. Um, but if you can figure out a way to connect you moving forward with the effort that you put in and tie those two together, then I think that's, that's the excitement is seeing that advancement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Well, well, let's, uh, let's dig into the kind of genesis and and growth of your business. So I'm I'm assuming uh, you started by yourself. Do you have a partner? Not, I did not. Nope. Nope. So my, my father started diamond asphalt when I was 17 maybe 18, oh. somewhere in there. Okay. Um, and uh, I'm trying to think, Hope, my wife, we were dating then. So this was 12 years ago. And um, yeah, so we, he started it and uh, uh, worked with him in the summers. And then I ended up going to college, you know, I think I was 19, 18, somewhere in there. And then um, uh, would come back in the, in the you know, in the, in the fall, summertime and, and work. And uh, then go back to school and make a little, you know, make a little debt, gain, gain some debt. And then I'd go back and try to pay it off and try to try yeah. to keep up with the uh, the output, you know. Um, and then I think it was. Uh, well, Hope graduated early. She graduated in three years. Wow. And I was like, well, you're done. I'm I'm done. So i made sure I took all my classes for, I was biblical counseling. So I was like, I, I got all my counseling classes and stuff and all the histories, like all the elect or the, uh, the, you know, general, general classes. I was like, I'm not, you know, I don't need those. So, um, so I dropped out, went back to work for dad. I was making, you know, 30 bucks an hour, making pretty good money, um, at, at 20 years old or whatever. And then, um, wow, that's like a millionaire. At 20. Yeah. I was, I was loving that. Right. That was, uh, yeah. I remember, I remember the moment though. So I ended up taking over the striping part of the business, line striping. So we were, uh, you know, a small 200,000 a year, roughly seal coating. And we did some infrared, which is where you heat up, heat up the asphalt and recycle it and then reuse it. And, uh, my best friend at the time had, had, uh, uh, had a line striper, an old line striper in the semi. And he's like, Hey, yeah, you guys are subbing out your line striper. You should, you should get my dad's old line striper. And I'm like, okay, you have a line striper. Like that's weird, but okay. So I got this thing and, you know, fixed it, fixed it up. It was ancient. And, uh, I said, went to my dad's like, Hey, can I, can I make the money from line striping? And, you know, uh, that'll be kind of my little sub business. And he said, sure. So that, that was when streamline striping was, was started. And, uh, uh, you know, painting lines. I, I don't really doubt that I was making as much as I thought I was making, but at the time I thought, you know, hundred bucks an hour is roughly what I was bringing in. Maybe it was, I don't know. And I uh, went to college, was working in the dining common and uh, making six bucks an hour. And I remember thinking I have to work a lot of hours at six bucks an hour to make what I was making in an hour painting <laughs> lines. So I think I, I think I 
was getting a scholarship. So I, I finished up the one semester with the, the dining common. And then I called around and asked a few companies if they needed a line striper. And second company I called was like, absolutely come on over. And long story short, that led into a contract striping. Uh, it was 180 CVS pharmacies on the East coast. Um, and so, uh, they, they called me and they're like, Hey, Hey, we had this contract and, and, uh, 180 CVSs and, and we're trying to find somebody to, you know, I don't even think they said they were trying to find somebody to do it. They just said that our current striper is too old and he doesn't want to like travel around that much. And I was like, Oh, that's too bad. And we hung up the phone and then like five seconds later it hit me. I'm like, I'm an idiot. Like I'm that guy. So I call him back and I was like, Hey, I'm your guy. And, uh, He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, I'll, I'll go live in a, in a trailer and drive around and stripe CVS. He's like, no problem. And he's like, really? I'm like, yeah. So I think it was like within a week. I'm like, when do you need it done? And he's like, yesterday. I'm like, okay. So I go buy a truck and a trailer, like this big 24 foot, you know, raised ceilings, air conditioning unit in this, you know, equipment trailer. Right. And uh, Hope put together this, you know, map quest kind of, you know, route for me and i just went from one location to the next and uh you know long story short at the end of about i think it was a month or two into that i was striping six or eight of them a night just flying through them oh my God. and uh i had like a week thing. that's right that's right yeah <laughs> uh I, I definitely was timing them i definitely was timing them um so about about a month and a half into it or two months into it i uh it was like a week of rain solid and so i was like man i'm not gonna sit in my trailer in walterboro south carolina i was at for for you know a week so i went up to ohio to see my brother and uh on the way back a week later uh i had locked my trailer in a walmart parking lot thought it was secure and on the way back i i found that it was hauled off 10 minutes before i arrived for my 10-hour trip from ohio somebody had stolen my trailer with everything in it oh my uh, gosh. brand new line stripers 500 gallons of paint i just refilled with paint i was i mean i was an idiot it was like major life lesson uh i was just naive like why, why would anybody take my trailer you know um but god used it man so i i went from that uh, i remember waking up or i got there that night thought i was like hallucinating and drove to the wrong parking lot like i was just tripping out like where's my trailer I mean, did i am i in the wrong part of the u.s like did i put in the wrong address and uh woke up the next morning i called the guy who i was doing the contract for and i was like hey insurance is going to take a few days to figure this out you know like maybe a few weeks uh can i come stay busy working with you and so he put me to work and it's all relevant though because when i went to work with tab for tab was his name uh that was kind of when I started to get more experience into like the bigger world of development and front end loaders and dozers and all this big equipment and kind of seeing that happen. Like, and this is, this is kind of cool. Um, and again, nothing against my dad. I love him, you know, dearly. We're, we're great friends, but you know, at the time when I was working with him, it was like, you know, he was the only one who drove the Sealco rig, right? He, he was the only one who, uh, he, he was, it was, you know, this is his baby, right? So he didn't really delegate a lot. There was a lot of, you know, close management. Um, so seeing Tab, you know, let me get in this, you know, $500,000 loader or whatever and just like run it. I was like, man, this is, this is interesting, right? I haven't had an experience this before. So I brought that back home to Michigan and that was kind of the beginning of, unfortunately, a lot of, uh, I think I had a lot of pride and a lot of arrogance and just thinking that I, you know, knew more and had seen this bigger world and kind of coming back to a little small small town country Michigan and seeing how we were running things. It was like, man, dad, there's a, there's another way. So a few, a few years of strife, strife between father and son. I mean, uh, it was not a pretty, pretty, uh, it's pretty rough. Let's just say that it was, uh, uh you know, when, when Gary talks about, uh, fighting with his dad and over the trailer that way, I'm like, man, that's, Ah, I get it. I totally get it. You know, that was that was my dad. It was it was not not fun. They're not not pretty. So uh, I ended up going to him and said, "Hey, dad, you know, I'll buy you out, uh, but I'm done working for you. I want to have a dad." And so we ended up getting an SBA loan, bought the business. That was in 2014. Mm -hmm. So uh, forgive me if I've you know make edit edit this out, but uh, shorten it down. But uh, uh, so yeah, I guess yeah. So that that was the beginning of when we took over. It was kind of cool the way it worked. That that first year, I year before I bought the business, I had managed and ran the business, um, mm -hmm. and we we doubled that year. So we went from two hundred thousand, which we've been at for about six years, just every year two hundred thousand. We hit four hundred, and then that actually allowed us to have the the business be worth enough to give my dad what he needed to make sense of him kind of stepping back. 
Um, and uh, the profit we made from that year we used as the down payment. So it, it, is, it was it was a beautiful, everything kind of lined up. So we bought the business. And then from there, it was, I think it was four years in a row of, of year over year growth. So it was 400 to 800, 800 to 1.2, 1.2 to 3.1. And then the five, 4.7, I think was the next one. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in 2017, after, you know, pretty aggressive growth, uh, went from like two employees to 50 employees and I don't know, three years. Oh uh, gosh. yeah, I don't, we didn't know what we were doing though, man. It was, cra- it was like, it was like exciting and fun and like diamonds, you know, on fire. And we were, but we had no idea what our costs were. We had no idea, you know, what we were doing. Uh, we were just hiring bodies to fill seats and let's go. Yeah. Um, I mean, we were literally working, you know, I'd get a call. Hey, hey, Parker, we got a, we got a project in, in Tennessee. We, you know, hundred, hundred grand, you ready to go? I'm like, let's go. Like it might've been 120 grand in cost, you know, but I was ready to, I was excited. So, um, yeah, so that was kind of that. So then in 2017, we lost a million dollars. We, we had a, we were, we were, uh, you know, I think we, we came through the year probably roughly break it even, but then our overhead was so high from November to February, we were bleeding just, just, you know, money was just flying out the, the door every day and we weren't, nothing was coming in. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, that was kind of, that was a really tough year. Uh, that was a really tough year. A lot of, you know, a lot of hard lessons and a lot of hard decisions of all those, you know, 50 people, a lot of them were let go and a lot of them were, you know, downsized and, you know, cut, cut back in the winter time to survive and make it through. And, um, it's really cool though, seeing how God, how God used that to prepare for like this last year with COVID. I mean, when COVID hit, we had a plan in place within, within a week we had, we knew how to adapt to what could be coming. Obviously nobody knew what was coming, you know, a week into COVID. Right. But, uh, it was pretty cool to see how, if we, if we hadn't had 2017, when COVID hit, we would have been done. Like, there's no doubt in my mind. Wow. Uh, we would not have been ready for how to adapt to lean, right? When you need to get lean and, and not, we didn't, I mean, jobs are being put on hold. Things are, you can't meet with customers. So it was like right in April, right when COVID hit or March. And that's right when the snow's gone and we are doing site visits with customers. Well, everybody was canceling. They're like, we, we're not, we can't meet on site and all of our budgets are being put on hold. And it's like, what is happening, you know? <laughs> so, um, wow. anyway, so that, that was just kind of cool to see how things, you know, things happen for a reason. And, and obviously, you know, I always say hard doesn't mean bad and, and good doesn't mean easy. You know, yeah. those, we, we associate those words and I think it's a super like fundamental to life. Uh, if you can figure that out, you can, you can, you can figure a lot, lot out because when you think in life that something that's hard is bad for you, it's almost always the opposite. Right. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, one one of my favorite questions that I that you uh, just answered, um, I, I ask almost every guest I talk to, um, what, what's the worst thing that ever happened to you that turned out to be the best thing? And it sounds yeah. like twenty seventeen might have might have been up there. It's up there. It's up there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I would, I would say to the answer to that question, I would say that my wife's health, man, that, that's been, when we got married, a month after we got married, she stopped walking. And uh, that was 2012, so roughly eight years ago. Mm-hmm. And since then, she's had, with the, the environmental mold, it's been, you know, she'll, she'll have, she had six months where she was doing really well, and then it'd go off, and it's just been kind of, it fluctuates with, you know, the seasons. Um, but uh I remember her calling me and being like, Hey, I, I was a month into marriage. I was at a w- wedding for my buddy and she called, I had to rush home and she's like, I can't feel the left side of my body and I can't, I can't walk. And I was like, what? Uh, and that, again, that was kind of the beginning of, you know, a medical journey of whatever. But I mean, I, I remember, you know, I still do it, but I, she's in a wheelchair now uh, when we go out, but it, it used to be, I would piggyback her everywhere and <laughs> people would think we were just like young and in love, which we were right. But, uh, they kind of laugh at us. And I'm like, I, I, sometimes I want to slap me like, you know, she can't walk, dude. Like, you know, but I get it. You, you can't, you know, they, you can't expect people to know that. But um, yeah. when they would make fun of us or, you know, maybe not hold the door or, or kind of just kind of, you know, uh, be rude. It's like, dude, like, I just didn't want to put her in a wheelchair. You know what I mean? I just didn't want to like submit to that, you know? So, yeah. Uh, 
but anyways, that's part of our move to Charlotte, right? And this is that, that's, uh, I, I, I tell her we're not going to like, I believe God has a plan and I believe that sometimes that plan might not be what you want and it can be hard. Right. But at the same time, I don't believe in just sitting still. So, uh, yeah. we are good no matter what I tell you, I hope I talk like, I'm like, we're good no matter what, if you don't get better in Charlotte, we're okay. But, uh, but I'm not going to just live in the comfortable, you know, Michigan for the rest of my life around family and, and not like hopefully give her somewhat of a normal life where she can interact with her kids and older kids and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. So yeah, I would say that's probably the uh, hardest thing. Uh, yeah. And we're still going through that, you know, but I would say that, you know, I don't, um, uh, I think when you have somebody who's sick like that, that you think, you know, you might lose, we didn't know what it was initially. So we thought, you know, I mean, you name it, you know, anything crazy, she had all the symptoms. So it was like, are you dying? She felt like she was dying, you know? So, oh uh, so, you know, you're, you're, you're 20, what, 22, <laughs> 22 years old. You have a wife that, you know, is super sick, can't walk. She's having like seizures sometimes. And we're like, we didn't, you know, nobody knew what it was. We'd go to the ER and they'd, you know, what, I mean, just basically what Delos, she goes, some, most of the people told us she was making it up. You know, that was, that was the typical response. Well, she was just that's helpful. Thank you. That was really helpful. Right. <laughs> um, so you, but you really gained perspective, right. On life and what matters. And yeah. um, I think that set the stage really early on in life for me to not just, uh, and that goes back to business. One of the, the big things I always said is I, I wanted to grow a business, but not sell myself to that business. And so I'll tell you, it's, it's very hard to do that. I'm not, uh, I don't have that figured out because kind of like what you said earlier, right? You enjoy it so much that at some point it kind of becomes like, I don't mind working. So then you kind of become addicted to what you don't mind. And then it's like, I think life can become out of balance. But um, uh, I think, yeah, with, with Hope's Health, uh, definitely, uh, realizing that, you know, you don't, your days might be numbered and, and oh, I guess we know our days are numbered, but, but you know, how soon you don't assume at 22 that it's anytime soon. Right. Yeah. Um, so how, how is yeah. your health uh, current? It's been improving. Um, it's yeah. really exciting. I, I was last night or the night before she got up to get her own water after while oh reading and I was like, that's awesome. Like, Oh my gosh, she, she just got water. And then she got water for me. And I was like, what? Like, you know, it's, it's still yeah. the little things, you know, but, uh, uh, it's, it's day by day, but I mean, we've been down here a week and there's improvements. So that's to me is, um, mm-hmm. huge. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I am not a doctor, uh, but I do claim to be, be one sometimes. Um, yeah. I, you know, I've had some weird medical things, like some really weird, uh, digestive stuff, some severe back injuries. And I found yeah. uh, acupuncture to be extremely yeah. helpful. Yeah. Uh, and, and also I, I did a blood uh, blood test recently and they measured everything. It was like super expensive. It was like 300 bucks or something. Yeah. And they're like, your, B, your B6 levels <clears throat> are the lowest any of us have ever seen. And I was like, is that why I'm tired all the time? And they're like, yes. yes. So I, I just started taking a B complex and I'm like, I feel like I'm 18 again. Wow. So, you know, there was, That's awesome. some, and I went to every normal doctor and was like, I'm tired. Like my brain's foggy. Like I, I'm like, no matter how much I sleep, I'm always tired. They're like, you're fine. Like go, you want some, you want a Z pack? You want some antibiotics? I'm like, no, I don't want antibiotics. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. There's some weird stuff that has had a, a like a massive impact on my health and ability to perform. Yeah, so. yeah. I'll t- the, the acupuncture thing's interesting. I we were just at church this last Sunday, and <clears throat> the couple that we met, she was an acupuncturist, and I was like, man, that's that's really cool. Um, so that it's yeah. it's interesting how since we've been down here, how there's been different, like there's a there's a, a juice. It's called clean juice. I don't know if that's if they have them out where they think they're the franchise, but uh, mm. there was like a, a prayer request little table area, which is kind of cool. And then they had um, like a business card of some random girl. And on the back, it said like environmental toxic mold, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, this is not a normal thing. Like hope's illness is like super rare. It's not, I mean, it's becoming more uh, mainstream for people to talk about mold in the way that we talk mm-hmm. about mold, but and most people think black mold is like the worst, like, well, there's lots, lots of molds that can hurt you. Right. But, yeah. um, 
anyway, so I, I took that back home to Hope. And I was like, this is, this is kind of weird. Like a mile, a mile down the road from our house, there's this random business card for this like environmental mold. I've never seen an environmental mold. Like, I, I don't know anybody who does that other than like her, like Hope's doctor in uh, Indianapolis is, mm -hmm. that's like her specialty. But uh, like we should, we should, if this isn't coincidence, I don't know, let's check it out. But um, yeah, obviously the more help you can get, right, to, to diagnose yeah. and help know what's out there. Yeah, I mean, I, I, my philosophy is like, like I'll try anything once if, if like one person is like, oh, this helped me. I'm like, cool. Like, okay, do a handstand for like thirty minutes straight. Like, I'll try it. Whatever. I'll try it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the same way. Hope is like not that way, right? I, we, I was laughing at her last night. I was like, you know, I, I get this card. And I'm like, man, like let's just call her and see if maybe we can learn something. And Hope's a learner, no doubt. But I mean, she, she gets it. And she's like. She's like, okay, like, you know, it's just, I, she, she's like, I read her story to, to Hope and she's like, yeah, she sounds like me. And I'm like, yeah, like, wouldn't that be cool to connect with somebody that kind of, you know, and yeah, it's just, you know, uh, it's funny how, uh, I, yeah, I'm much more of a like try it once kind of guy. Mm -hmm. and, and I think, you know, an argument could be made that's, you know, that that's God's plan to bring you two together for you to, Kind of share that perspective oh, oh. Yeah, that's that's right yeah i like that so, i like that that's good yeah um well i wish her uh all all the the best health moving forward and i hope uh the charlotte move uh you know helps a ton. yeah 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 it's cool um, man i appreciate that yeah um we we got a, a li little bit more time to try to uh pull pull out some more of your wisdom and experience um yeah that's right so, so one thing i struggle with mightily is keeping balance and it sounds like you know uh just just being an entrepreneur in a vacuum would be insanely hard to keep balance but then you throw you know a, a, a wife's uh health into the mix and then you got three kids under four like what what's what's your uh What's your strategy for maintaining balance and sanity at the same time? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. I'm trying to think. Um, I've got some different things come to mind. I'm just trying to think if they're the. Um, yeah, I would say. Uh, I would say one thing that comes to mind is work hard, play hard, um, which you know some people might say, or you know maybe Hope would say that I play too hard at times, but I. I, don't know, I just think I think you know if you're gonna work as as much as we work, then that may means that we make a little bit more than the person who works 40 hours a week. So mm -hmm. like it's got to be worth it, right? So I think yeah. I think you know being yeah. feeling the freedom to enjoy um, the fruits of your labor, which I think is biblical, and I think that's you know totally totally good, right? Um, I think God's cool. Uh, with that. I think he's cool with that. I also think you know I think probably the biggest struggle or you know in that realm would be finding the energy that comes from uh, giving to others too, right? Like there can be that self self care, uh, that, you know, I think can be okay, but I'm going to go too far with it quite easily. Right. And then there's, there's the, to me, which be more biblical is caring for others. And I think that's, um, maybe often overlooked, but maybe the most fulfilling thing, right. Um, way to get energy is kind of a backdoor to energy for me, at least. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's one thing that comes to mind. I think, you know, I think I have an unfair advantage um, because my uh, my life circumstances are pretty set. Um, you know, we have a nanny and, and she actually lives with us right now. But when, when we were in Michigan, you know, at five o'clock, roughly nanny goes home. So wife can't walk, three kids are there. How does Parker balance life? Well, it's balanced for me, right? I've got to, I've got to be home and I've got kids that need me. I got poopy diapers and I've got mouths that want to be fed. And, you know, I mean, it's kind of the natural, like, it just kind of takes care of itself for, you know, for me. Um, mm -hmm. But, but I think, um, you know, I think as far as business goes, I think my, my perspective has always been to have, you know, be willing to pay people um, and to get good people and then, and then to put them around you so that you don't have to do everything. Mm -hmm. um, what I've also found to be a problem with that is that you end up getting good people, which means you can go further and then you end up just doing more because you have lots of good people. Um, so if, if I, you know, if you can slow it down a little bit and, and work within what you have the capability of doing and let that, you know, kind of control itself. I think I always struggle with wanting to push 
I, I love pushing the boundaries of what we're capable of and, and, yeah. you know, which is great. And it makes life really yeah. exciting. I guess that's maybe one way to put it right is exciting or adventurous, but, um, it can also be just kind of constant chaos too. So, mm-hmm. um, I would be honest with you to say, I, I don't have the, you know, the priorities, the balance in life thing is, it's a big challenge for me. Uh, I don't, I don't know that I have a whole lot of, uh, I would, I would probably return the question to you and say, what, well, you know, what, 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 what have you found? Uh, you know what I mean? Cause I, I don't know that I figured it out. <clears throat> um, yeah. Your, your answers were awesome, man. I mean, sometimes the, the world kind of balances it for you. It's like you, you have to take care of your family. So you, you know, and the nanny goes home at five. So maybe, maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's having priorities, understanding your priorities. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I, I guess I would say I meet a lot of people and, and it's, you know, I, I don't know how you were raised, but I was raised in a pretty conservative Christian home. And I think, you know, you sometimes can take that for, for granted that, it's kind of second nature to me that like it's God, wife, family, work. Like that's just like mm-hmm. I would never I would never have a doubt in my mind. There's never a question in my mind that like, oh well, I have to work to provide for my family, so work is more important. Like there's no way, right? Like God God takes care of that part of it. Like I follow what God says and then he works out the stuff that doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's just that's just you know how I operate. This is how I think and process. And I think a lot of people uh overcomplicate it, right? It's it's uh the, the, the hard part is, is actually executing it, right? The hard part is keeping priorities in line, but the question of what is the priority, like there's no question, like it's not a, and I, you know, not to be proud or, or, or whatever, or arrogant. I just, I just don't, I don't, there's no doubt in my mind that if I follow God and put what he says to put first, first, that he will work out the rest, right? He will take care of, the Bible says that he'll make, make your path straight. So that, again, yeah, the clarity of, you know, they say easy isn't, I, I'm gonna say it again, but easy isn't good, and 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 I think that that is a hard, a hard thing to grasp. But it's the, you know, it works itself out. Yeah, yeah. A- amen. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I, you know, balance. I, I don't know. Uh, delegate. <laughs> Have a lot of great people that can can help you do as much as humanly possible, and. Uh, Mm-hmm. I, I don't have a family. I have a, a girlfriend, but I, I imagine when we, you know, have children that I will uh, be heavily in favor of some assistance there as well. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, well, I yeah. want to talk about... Uh, you know, you, you took the reins from your dad because, because you yeah. were like, you were like, I, I think that, that I can do some really exciting things here. Um, I, I guess it's a two part question. What, what kind of gave you the confidence and the idea that you could do that? And then second, what, what drove so much of your growth? Hmm. Yeah, um, I would say uh, if you kind of rewind, it was baby steps. So mm-hmm. I think, you know, the line striper, uh, line striping, when you think of paving parking lots, line striping is one of the simplest. There's still complexity to it, but it's one of the simplest things. So that kind of getting my feet wet um, with that and then learning sales. Um, I think sales is, uh, I'm pretty passionate about helping people understand <laughs> that sales is not the, you know, the used car salesman, uh, especially younger people are like, oh, I don't know, I don't know what, what I want to go to college for. And I'm like, have you thought about sales? And they're like, uh, and I'm like, it's like really practical. You know, like if you don't know how to sell something and I mean, like, honestly sell something, not like sleazy sales, like mm-hmm. connect with people. Right. Uh, which I obviously, you know, but I'm just saying, you know, that, that a lot of times is not assumed. So um, I think learning how to sell early on um, led to, a lot of confidence when it came time to buy the business. Um, I remember, remember in Fred, uh, you know, we could make, I don't know, a couple grand a day, you know, and I remember thinking, well, my, my business loan is like 3,500 a month and I can sell in Fred. So worst case scenario, right. Not, not understanding overhead and any of that kind of stuff at the time, or I guess my overhead was the $3,500 a month payment for the business. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm like, I can sell two jobs and pay for my business loan. So 
am I afraid like of that? Like, no. So that was, it, for me, it was really like, it's an easy, I, I had already had the, the tried and tried. I already knew I could sell it. Right. I already knew that I could generate the income. So mm-hmm. um, that helped, I think a lot too, with the confidence. Mm-hmm. So that was, is that answer your question? Was that, that yeah. that's, that was kind of the stepping stone. Yeah. I, I'm always fascinated because, you know, your, your story is eerily similar to Gary's. It's like, you know, a, a, a dad kind of instilled a great work ethic and they were just like very, very happy where they were. They're like, I don't want to risk anymore. I don't care about growth. Like, let's just, this is great. Like everything's paid for. Yep. Um, right. And then, you know, you and Gary come along, you're like, no, we can do way more. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Well, yeah, it's my, my mentor, he always laughs. He's like, Parker, he's like, you're not afraid of debt. And I'm like, I honestly don't like debt. But if it makes sense, like, mm-hmm. I don't know, like, what's the worst that can happen? Like, I guess you, hopefully you bought a good investment that you could sell, maybe take mm-hmm. a little hit on. But like, the worst thing that could happen is that you don't, I don't know. I mean, it depends on where you're going. You know, I mean, again, I'm not, I'm not going to say that that's a whole nother conversation on debt, right? But I, I do think obviously that is a useful tool. Mm -hmm. um when you're buying things that return on investment right not not things that are you know just for fun but but you know we 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 uh, four you're good i was gonna say we four extra snow this last winter and and we we took on a crap ton of trucks i bought i think 12 trucks in like a month and a half Mm -hmm. uh and we we you know went from a couple hundred thousand to almost you know a million in snow and I will tell you this. My, my mentor said, some, he said, Parker, he said, uh, some people will tell you you're brave. And he said, other people will tell you you're stupid. And I would say he was, he was right. Uh, forexing a business is no joke. And uh, we did it in, you know, three months of time, but that, that, uh, but we couldn't have done that without, without debt. Right. And obviously we, we leveraged, we leveraged some money, but we, then the ROI on that, I mean, we'll have those trucks paid off in two years. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, again, makes and snow comes every year in different, very, you know, different amounts, but it's, mm-hmm. it's getting to snow. <laughs> so, yeah. I can't remember the last time it didn't snow for an entire winter. <laughs> sure. It always snows. And we based our projections off of like the worst year, which was like last year was a horrible year in snow. And we, we basically said, okay, if we have the horrible year again, are we okay? And we're like, yeah, we'll be all right. So yeah. why not? Well, that's, that's not super risky. If like, you know, you know, you're, you're, you're basing it off of the worst possible outcome. You're like, even if it's the worst, we'll still be, keep our head above water. So the risky part that I didn't realize was when you forex <clears throat> the infrastructure that we needed for those two months, like we buried our entire company. Like it was, it was supposed to be our off season, right? And asphalt, you can get a break. It was like busier than the peak asphalt season, which was really bad for morale right? Because mm-hmm. our guys are kind of expecting January to be slow and then it hit snow hit and we realized our processes and our, our uh, technology that we were using was not sufficient to handle uh, 300 jobs a night and it's all happening in the middle of the night. So you have this mess that's created, you know, while everybody's asleep and then you wake up to like, oh my gosh, all of our time entries weren't right. And oh my gosh, we have it was just snow is very you know, like, you know, data entry heavy, right? There's lots of, you know, hundred dollars here, $200 there, $300 here. And a uh, <laughs> lot of, lot of stress to get that caught, you know, back up. We implemented a new system in the middle of all of this to try to, you know, capture it and, and manage it well. And uh, I mean, probably could have used like three mechanics with, you know, just the amount of, you know, 30 plows out, you know 30 salters things break wiring doesn't work lights go you know things just happen right like it doesn't it doesn't matter how new your equipment is it's just stuff happens so yeah wow all right yeah. well, we're uh we're, we're coming to the end of our time here i know you're you're a, a busy man trying to maintain balance so i want to respect That's right. that um what what is it sounds like <clears throat> kind of the the driver of growth was like you just hitting the pavement and selling your, your, your butt off. What, uh, yeah. and any sales advice, uh, client finding advice, prospecting advice, what, what's, what works for you? 
Yeah. What I knew now versus what I know then is, is very different. So I would say, uh, um, what I knew then was probably just like you said, hard work ethic. And, um, I think I had the advantage that pavement is outside and exterior and I don't have to talk to anybody before I can see that they need me. Mm. So, you know, I see a pothole and pretty likely when you knock on their door and say, Hey, can I give you a bid that, you know, they're probably going to be excited. Right. Yeah. Uh, they would have had to find you. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So that was, that was the old plan was just drive around I'd go to a city and just drive around and look for holes and go in and knock on doors and man, it worked pretty well. Yeah. Um, our, our strategy now is much more, you know, I'd say sophisticated, right. And I mean, link, LinkedIn yeah. is, uh, amazing. Um, sales navigator, if you haven't used that, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we work with a couple different consultants that, um, have automated some stuff for us that, you know, allow us to connect with people and message them and sequences that allow us to, you know, if we're the right fit and then, and they're our target customers. So being able to, I'm sure you're familiar with LinkedIn, right? With with mm, the ability, yeah, yeah, to, to be able to put in property managers in Charlotte and be a new guy here in Charlotte and be able to find five thousand property managers. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Uh, how I don't need to go drive around. I just need to message people and ask them for their business. You know, <laughs> um, so it, it's really it's really a different strategy now, but. Uh, but then having, having the resources behind that the infrastructure to be able to provide them something that's different. And we're, so that's maybe another conversation, but we're working on an app to uh, capture, um, yeah, capture data quickly and easily for customers. So. Nice. Let, yeah. Flexing some technology. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's exciting. Yeah. So I don't know if that answers the question, but I would say, uh, honestly, right now, yeah, growth is driven by uh, LinkedIn is is a mm-hmm. big deal. And is your is your LinkedIn sales strategy, do you just connect with them, hope they accept, and then kind of send them? Uh, I should try a couple. I like to try a couple different things. I like I like the like blind, you know, just send out an invite and see if they'll accept and then if they accept. If I if I when I'm being really intentional, it's it's a uh, it's it's view their page, they see me, and then the second one is you know it's send them an invite, but don't tell them why. Uh, they can figure that out, and then I then I then I tell them what I say. Hey, so what I do after they accept my invite, and then the, the fourth or fifth step is DoorDash and coffee. Uh, that's like the gold right there. So you send them they have you know a, a caramel latte, uh, you know a chai tea, and you know whatever four different options to show up to their door. And then you go call them and it's like, they're no longer cold. Uh, you know what I mean? So you warm them up with a lot of touches and then a really kind gesture and uh, and then make go after it. And by that point in time, they like you already. Yeah. Is it, isn't that funny? I mean, how much does that cost? Like 20 bucks to send for bucks. Yeah. 20 bucks. And then they're, they're like, we like you so much. We want to give you a six or, you know, even seven figure contract. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Talk about ROI, yeah. my brother. That is a great <laughs> ROI on some DoorDash coffee. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. I was telling our sales team, we had a meeting just before this and I said we were at a, uh, like a gluten-free vegan uh, bakery or a breakfast place this last weekend. And uh, we walk in with, you know, nanny, grandparents, three kids, wife in a wheelchair. I mean, it's, again, when we show up, it's like, mm-hmm. Parties There's a lot arrived. going on. Yeah. Party's arrived. And uh, usually it's a pretty noisy party. <laughs> and so uh, the waitress, when you sit under the table, she's like, hey, I can give out three free pancakes every day. And I, you know, I thought this would be, you guys, you know, speak, you guys would be a good one to give it out. I'm like, man, how cool is that? She's empowered to just give us a pancake. <laughs> and we were, t- we we're talking at our sales meeting about DoorDash and coffee. And now that's just like, that guy, that's your pancake. Like, just, yeah. you don't need to ask, just go send the coffee make them feel special. And I mean, seriously, because of that stupid little, you know, dollar and 50 pancake, she made our day. I mean, the, the, the table was quiet. The kids were calm. We felt loved. And <laughs> like, how simple is that? You know? So. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, well I, could, hey, uh, I could, I could throw questions at you for the, the rest of the afternoon. You were a, a wealth <laughs> of knowledge and valuable experience my man but uh i know i know you got important things to do so i will 
I will end our uh, call with one final question. It's, uh, it's a doozy, so get ready. Ooh, I'm um, ready. I'm not going to explain any, any aspects of it. It's, it's whatever it means to you. And the question is, what are you working towards? Mm. What am I working towards? Um, I think um, life has different seasons and I think that I firmly believe that the varying links that there are there's a season early on in life where you really have to um I say that you have to. I think that you can do it again in different priorities, but I, I think it's really rewarding. Um, sorry, call came in. I think it's really rewarding when you can buckle down early in life and and put in the hard work before life hits you. And I, that was necessarily intentional for me. I didn't realize when you had kids how much it would change. Um, but I think that uh, I'm in a season of. Um, a lot of introspection in how busy my life is and, you know, how short, you know, your kid's life is, how fast they grow up and you're kind of watching this happen and you go, okay, you know, you've heard people talk about it for years. Now you're seeing it, right. You know, my, my, my zero year old is now a four year old. Um, and so I would say, I, you know, what I'm working towards is um, transitioning uh, to a more stable uh, lifestyle that has still the rewards, but, but, you know, um, I was going to say the word freedom, but it's so cliche. I don't think freedom is really all that we think it is. Um, but, uh, uh, what am I working towards? I'd say I'm working towards, uh, establishing a strong foundation and foothold that, that has good rhythms and sustainable last year, our, our entire company's focus for the year was to create an intentional and sustainable culture. And I think that that captures uh, if you're not if you're not sustainable, then like what you're doing is just a like it's just a you know what I mean. It's an exciting moment, and I don't want to have one exciting moment. I want to have a lifestyle that is perpetuating exciting moments, and mm-hmm. probably means that the peaks can't be as high, but hopefully the lows won't be as low. Um, so I think for for my family and for you know going, I don't want to stop growing. I don't want to stop moving in life. Right, I'm not done. But I think just kind of transitioning to that, uh, uh, just a little more stable, a little more sustainable um, rhythm. Yeah. That's where I'm at right now. Awesome. Love it. Yeah. That, that sounds amazing to me. <laughs> the, the That's more, awesome. Uh, yeah. The, the more uh, stability and uh, uh, relaxation so, sounds, uh, sounds delightful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, man. Well, well, thanks so much for uh, taking the time to do this. I uh, know you're. Uh, Thank you, brother. Appreciate you having me on. In. Yeah, where where can people uh, find more about you and Diamond Solutions? Yeah, um, LinkedIn uh, mm-hmm. or uh, thediamondsolutions.com is our company uh, page, and uh, or Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And I'll I'll link uh, to both of those things in the show notes. Uh, we'll have an awesome rest of your day, man. Give give my best uh, to the family, and uh, we'll do, man. Best best of luck in Charlotte, man. That's that's exciting. Appreciate you, brother. Yeah. Best of luck to you in LA as well. It sounds uh, sounds like the, I mean, I think it, I want to come sometime. Yeah, dude, come visit, man. We're we're taking a boat out on Sunday. <laughs> Are you really? I love it. I love it. Yeah. All right, brother. Very good. Well, great. Uh, stay, stay, in, stay in touch, man. This is this is fun. Let's okay. do this again sometime, too. Let's do it. Yeah. yeah. All right, Chris. All right, brother. I'll catch you later. Peace. See ya.